This is the MIUI MIDI. It's freaking awesome. But you probably already knew that though. But have you heard about MIDI UI? I have, but I haven't tried it yet. Uh, let's try it out together, shall we? Oh, hey. <laughs> Hi there. How you doing? I'm TechDweeb. Thanks for clicking on the video today. Yeah, so the, the Miu Mini is freaking amazing. I love this thing to bits. I've made several videos on this thing. I, I made a review and unboxing, how to install Onion OS, how to scrape the art for your games. There's a link to all those videos in the description below if you want to see more. This thing is my current daily driver. It basically lives in my cargo pocket. I'm constantly finding times throughout the day to pull this out and squeeze in a quick round of burger time or make some progress in Dragon Warrior, which I actually finished like yesterday. Yeah, so I've been using this thing a ton. I love it to bits. I love Onion OS. It's freaking amazing. It's a tinkerer's dream, but there's a new kid on the block. There's a new operating system for this thing. It's called Mini UI. It's supposed to be super simple, it's very kind of bare bones. It's just meant to get you into the games, get, get you playing with minimal menus and settings and stuff. I don't know if it's going to be any good. I, I've never checked it out. I've heard some good things about it. Lots of people love it. Lots of people love Onion. I love Onion. So let's see if I love Mini UI as well. I'm going to be using a fresh SD card. Uh, this is my Onion OS SD card. We'll just put that safely right over there so that I could go back to that later. And we're going to be using this new 32 gigabyte uh, SD card to check out Mini UI. Let me just get in here. There we go. A freaking get into this. Why can't I get this? Oh my god, are you freaking kidding me? Come on. Sheesh, okay, <laughs> there we go. No problem, easy as pie. Piece of freaking garbage. Okay, so he here's our new SD card. It's a 32 gigabyte Lexar SD card. We're gonna be installing MIDI UI on here, giving it a test and we'll see be weeby what it's like and if I'm gonna stick with it or go back to Onion. Let's just quickly check that our SD card is the right format. Yes, yes, here we are, a FAT32. If yours isn't FAT32, then you'll need to format it. Uh, you could use the Windows built-in formatter for that, I think. Alrighty, well, let's go to the website and check out this mini UI and see what it's all about. Mini UI is simple, some might say to a fault. That's okay. I think it's one of those things where if you like it, even just a little bit, you'll love it. Well, that's a bold statement. Uh, we'll see how true that is. Mini UI is defined by no. No box art, no video previews, no background menu music, no custom themes, no also rads. What the heck is an also rad? Is that a thing? Am I missing something? Also rad. One, a horse or dog that finishes out of the money in a race. Two, a contestant that does not win. Okay, so no almost doing good. So I guess that means that it does good. That seems like an obtuse way to put it, but uh, okay, moving along I guess. Mini UI is too full of self-loathing for all that. It doesn't like launchers, it doesn't like being one, it wants to disappear and speed you on your way. Mini UI is unapologetically opinionated software. So it's sentient, it's a sentient UI, and it doesn't like itself, but it doesn't care what you think. Uh, that kind of reminds me of myself, to be honest. Uh, maybe I will like this after all, now that I think about it. Check the releases for the latest, and if you want more info before downloading, the readme file is included in every release is also available here. Okay, let's download this thing. We'll go to the releases. Mini UI version something. Yeah, okay. We'll download the base, and we'll download the extras, which add extra emulators. Gonna unzip these each to a folder on my desktop, and we're ready to rock. There's a readme in the zip that looks like it has all the instructions. That's convenient. Features. Uh, tells you about all the stuff. No settings. Configuration. Which is a lie, actually. There, there is settings for the emulators and stuff. It is very simple, though. Consistent in emulator menu with quick access to save states, disk changing, and emulator options. Oh, that sounds pretty good, actually. Oh, this is good here. Automatically sleeps after 30 seconds or press power to sleep and wake. Automatically powers off while asleep after 2 minutes or hold power for 1 second. Yeah, that's good because sometimes I need to stop playing quickly, so I just put it to sleep and shove it in my pocket. 
but then I forget it's there and it loses a bunch of battery and the next time I go to play it I have to charge it up. So that's actually a good feature. Alright, I'll show you all this stuff once we get up and running. <laughs> Let's just get to the installation. MIDI UI works on all known versions of the official firmware. No need to upgrade. Save yourself a headache. Oh, that's really awesome. So you don't need to update the firmware of the device. Which is arguably the most complicated and dangerous step of installing Onion OS. This just works no matter which firmware you're using. That's pretty freaking awesome if you ask me. Copy the contents of this archive to the root of a fresh FAT32 formatted SD card. Don't forget the BU folder. Insert your SD card into the device and power it on. MIDI UI will install automatically and be ready to go in about 10 seconds. Yeah, that's easy enough. Oh, and there's some shortcuts too. Uh, brightness, volume, power off. Cool. Alright, let's do this thing. So, we just gotta copy over all this stuff. Boom! <laughs> it's as easy as that. I'm not going to copy over the ROMs yet because I want to boot it up first to make sure it all works before messing around with it, so let's do that now. Safely eject, shove this in the MIDI, and we'll fire it up. Installing MIDI UI. Oh my god, is that it? That, that took like three seconds. It's done? Wow, that, that's freaking fast, man. Alright, well I guess I could have copied the ROMs over, so let's do that now. i going to power it off, yank the SD card out, and shove it back in my PC. Oh, and I also want to check out some of those extras. We'll do that later though. I just want to check out the base configuration for MIDI UI first. So here's our ROMs folder. As you can see, it only has a few systems by default. All the best systems though. You got your Game Boy, your Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, Nintendo, Sega Genesis, PlayStation 1, and your Super Nintendo. One thing it doesn't have that I do want is PC Engine, or TurboGrafx-16 as we call it here in Canada. I like playing those games. Uh, that's in the extras zip, so we'll check that out later. So adding ROBS is easy. You just copy over the ROBS from your ROB library. I have a small best of ROB collection here that I use for testing. Just like 10 games in each system, so let's copy those over now. Also, some emulators will require a BIOS. I'm pretty sure the only ones you actually need are the Famicom Disk System, if you're using that, which I'm not. I'm just using NES ROBS, but I will need this PlayStation BIOS. PSX on PSP660.bid. I'm not gonna give you a link for that. You can find it on your own, you lazy jerk. These BIOS files are case sensitive, by the way. Uh, the one I downloaded was all caps, so you gotta make sure that they're all lowercase like it shows in the readme. Alright, that's it. All ready to go, so let's shove this SD card back in my MIDI. Oh, look at that. All the systems, they're, they're all showing up. Actually, I'm going to reduce the brightness because it helps with filming. Uh, just use start and the L and R buttons. Oh, there we go. Can you see that okay? I think that looks pretty good. Alright, so here we are, ready to play some games. So let's start out with... Uh, you guys know what's coming. <laughs> Burger time, baby. So yeah, it, it runs totally fine, <laughs> obviously. The, the performance won't be drastically different from stock firmware or Onion OS, with, with a few exceptions that we'll see in a bit. Save states uh, work as expected. Y you can save and load your state. As you can tell, the, the aspect ratio is fine, but the scaling. The image is small, right? I prefer to stretch the image so that it fills the vertical space, but it keeps the original aspect ratio. So I'll show you how to do that now. We just need to open the menu, go to Advanced, Audio and Video Settings, and then change the screen size to Aspect. That makes the image nice and big without distorting the aspect ratio. Easy enough. Now, uh, as for the color, uh, maybe you like the default, maybe you don't. But there are several color palettes to choose from in the Emulator Options menu. You can make it sort of bluish, or like red and yellow from the Game Boy Color, or super green, or gray, or super blue, or purple. I like this one. Special one. This looks good to me. Now when you're done tweaking your options and you have your settings all perfect, what you want to do is save these settings so they're, they're always applied. You can do this by selecting Save Config. You can either save it for the whole system as a global config or ju for just this game. I'm going to save this globally so that it's always applied. And now it'll stay like this forever. And we'll save our state and exit the game. So that's super easy, and now when we open it, the settings should be saved. Also, there, there, there's a cool feature of MIDI UI. We can either open the game normally and then load our state if we want to, or we can press the X button right from this menu to resume our last state. Check this out. Boob. 
<laughs> Look how quick that was. Isn't that crazy? Here's another cool feature. Check this out. Let's say I'm playing and I need to stop quickly and be done playing. I gotta quickly turn it off and shove it in my pocket and I don't have the time or ambition to go through the whole process of saving my state and exiting the game and powering off the device and then later turning it on and selecting my game and loading the state. Watch this. I'm just gonna hold the power button at the top, quick save created, and it powers off. Okay, so now I can shove this in my pocket, go around town, do all my stuff that I do in town, gallivanting, meandering, loitering, all that town stuff. And then, when I'm ready to get back to my game, just hold that power button. It'll boot up by itself. It's not instant, it takes a few seconds. But then, boom! It starts up the device and puts me back in the game exactly where I left off. And that's pretty darn cool, if you ask me. So, with all that out of the way, let's check the performance of a few systems. This operating system uses PicoArch for the emulation, with Libretro cores as the back end. As always, there are some quirky little things with a few of the games. Uh, but most of the games run perfect. Like 99.9% .9 of the games will run problem free, but there are a few that might give us issues. So let's see how they do. Here in Game Boy Advance, uh, this game, Duke Nukem Advance. Uh, this one always gives me problems. So let's try that now. Oh, of course, uh, since this is my first time starting up the Game Boy Advance, the integer scaling is the default view. So we need to fix that, don't we? And make sure to save the config, and we'll get into the game, and... Yeah, that, that it's not ideal, <laughs> that's for sure. The, but the performance is fine. Uh, great, actually. But the visuals have these weird vertical line artifacts. This is exactly the same visual glitches that I was getting in the default emulator in Onion OS. The way I got around that there was by using a different emulator. You know, Onion has a bunch of different emulators and many more options for tweaking the settings. And that's the power of Onion OS, right? You have the flexibility to change things, to tweak things. You don't have that on Mini UI. So while it's simple and elegant, it's not as customizable. It's not a tweaker's paradise the way that Onion OS is, but that's okay, you know? Simplicity versus flexibility. If you want simple, that's what MIDI UI is for. Now to show you that you're not gonna have problems running most of your stuff, let, let's test another game. Here's Mario Kart Super Circuit, running A-OK, -okay, as you can see. And here's Advance Wars, again, no problems. And here's Wario Land 3 for the Game Boy Color. Uh, the, the game worked fine. <laughs> I just got bored waiting for the unskippable cutscene. Good time as any to take a root beer break, don't you think? Oh my god, why is this cutscene so long and boring? Okay, there we go. Yeah, the game runs fine, as expected. Let's try a hard to run game on the SNES. I think we're gonna fire up some Star Fox. This game rarely runs well. Gotta set that aspect scaling, of course. And you know what I'm gonna do? I I'm gonna turn on auto frame skip here. I don't know if we'll need it, but I have no problem just leaving auto frame skip on so that I don't need to think about it. So how does Star Fox do? <laughs> Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. It's running fine. It feels great. No audio stuttering, no slowdown. That's great. Really, really great. This is a, a great device. It's more powerful than lots of the cheap devices, but games like Star Fox seem to cause problems on lots of higher-end devices and often require lots of hacky tweaking to get them to run properly. This is running awesome, right out of the gate. Good stuff. So nice to know that the tricky Super Nintendo games will run fine. Don't have to tweak around with a ton of different emulators and settings to try to find what works. That's pretty cool. But what about PlayStation? This will be the hardest one to emulate, obviously. It's a 3D system, so let's go right for the big guns. Bloody Roar 2. Oh, and I copied over that BIOS, so l let's make sure that it even works. Is it gonna load? Did the BIOS work? Yeah, yeah it did. <laughs> nice. Bloody Roar 2 is the hardest PS1 game to emulate. If this runs, then everything else should run fine. Realistically, most stuff should run fine, but this will be the ultimate test. 
I'm gonna start by setting that aspect scaling, since it's the first time we use this system. And again here, I'm gonna set the frame skip to auto. I, I think auto frame skip makes the most sense for any system that you're thinking that they might have some problems. I, it probably should have been enabled by default, to be honest. If you don't want to have to deal with toggling it off and on, just, just set it to auto so that the games run at a normal speed, even if it's not a full 60 frames per second all the time. So let's see how it does. And look at that, it's running just fine. Maybe the frame skip is helping us out, but honestly, it feels buttery smooth. If there are frame dips, they're, they're not frequent, and the auto frame skip makes it so that I don't even notice them. And it's nice that MiniUI has such great performance right out of the gate. <laughs> Since there's not a lot of settings to tweak, Having games that work well without needing to tweak anything is why this sort of simplistic minimalist OS works well. I think I'm gonna start up Dragon Warrior on the NES because th this is something that's important, I think. Let's say you want to try MidUI, but you have a save game file from your previous system. Like, I've been playing through the original Dragon Warrior on the NES, and I have a save file. I actually finished it, you know, like, yesterday, but I want to know if I had a game on the go, I obviously wouldn't want to have to start over. Yeah, I put like, I don't know, 20 hours into Dragon Warrior or something. So let's see if the save states and the save games from my Onion installation are compatible here. I get to start a new game, I get just far enough into the game so that I can save the game. You, you know, the cartridge save, like on, save it in the game itself. And I'm also going to save the state. There we go. So we'll check on this on the computer and see what sort of save files we have here on MidiUI. And then we'll see if we can swap them with my Onion OS save files. Oh, and while we're putting the SD card back in the computer, let's also try to put the PC Engine or the TurboGrafx-16 emulator on here too. And the ROMs, because that, that, that's something I definitely want to get working on here. <laughs> Gotta be able to get my Devil's Crush fix, if you know what I mean. First things first, let's grab my save file and the save state file from my Onion OS SD card, which are kept in the RetroArch slash dot RetroArch folder. In there, there are separate folders for saves and states. So in saves, I need to go down to the NES emulator, which is Nestopia, and grab my Dragon Warrior save file, which is in the dot SRM format. I'll just drop that on my desktop. And I'm also gonna grab the state file while I'm in here, which is in the states folder, again, under Nestopia. And I'm gonna grab the most recent state, 77. Wow, I actually have lots of save states for this. Have I really played this 77 times? This is in the dot state format. Okay, we got those states, so let's eject my onion SD card and put in the new mini UI SD card. There we go. So in here, there's a folder on the root level of the SD card called saves. Easy enough. And there's my Dragon Warrior save. This is in a .sav format. And from what I understand, .srm files are exactly the same as .sav. You just need to rename them from .srm to .sav. So I'm gonna delete the new MIDI UI save, which is the .sav file, and then copy over the old Onion save file and rename it from .srm to .sav. It'll ask, are you sure you want to rename it? And you say, yeah, man, I want to rename it. Let's check out the save state format, which are in .st0 format. And honestly, I don't know if the states are compatible. Maybe you can find a converter, but it's probably better just to stick with transferring the cartridge saves because I know they're compatible. Okay, one more thing to do here. I want to add PC Engine or TurboGrafx-16 to MidiUI. That's easy to do from what I understand. You just need to copy over the folders from the extras zip. So from the extras zip, I'm going to take the TurboGrafx-16 folder from the ROMs directory and copy that over. Then I'm also going to copy over the folder for the BIOS. And then I need to create a folder called emus so that it matches the extras zip. I, I suppose you can just copy over the whole contents of the zip if you wanted all the stuff. I just want turbo graphics though. I don't, I don't want any extra stuff on here. I'm going to copy over the pce.pak folder from the emus over to the same directory on my SD card. Easy enough. Oh, and according to the readme, we'll need a BIOS file, which is called syscard3. So we'll get that BIOS file using my elite hacker skills. Just gotta hack the internet over here. Hacking, hacking. Okay, got it. Now we'll just copy it over. That was easy. 
Oh, I guess we'll need some robs, huh? I'm gonna copy over my robs and then eject it. All right, that's the easy part. Well, there we go. We have our saved game from Dragon Warrior on here and our PC Engine slash TurboGrafx-16 emulator and ROMs on here. Now let's see if any of this stuff works. And look at that, TurboGrafx-16's on there. And our ROMs are detected right away. Let's try some Devil's Crush. <laughs> Boom, we have TurboGrafx-16 on Mini UI now. Wow, that, that was ridiculously easy. So, you know, the default systems, if you're fine with those, you can just play with those right away. But it's nice to know you can add other systems. That extra zip has sub, and you can download more through the website, I think. If there's some system you just gotta have, just go ahead and add it. And, well, let's see if our Dragon Warrior save worked. Well, we'll start up the game. I think I was level 16 when I made this save. So we'll, if it shows level 16, then we'll know it worked. We're not going to load the state because that's our other save. But if we load the game, it should have the cartridge save. All right, starting up, we'll continue our quest. And there we go. It worked. Level 16 character. So this is the save for my onion install, and it worked fine here. No problems at all. Just got to change the extension on the file. That, that's good to know. So if you have a game on the go, yeah, no problems bringing it over to your mini UI system. I don't think you can bring over your save states in the default format that they're in, but the save game file, the, the cartridge save, that, that comes over fine. And I, I might be wrong about the states, by the way. If anyone knows a way to convert those other states over to mini UI, please leave a comment below and I'll pin the comment so that everyone can know. So what do I think of mini UI? Well, I think it's freaking awesome. Y you know, I came into this not knowing what to expect. I came into this thinking, y you know what? I'm a tinkerer. I love Onion OS because I can tweak every little thing about the experience. It gives me the power to change things or try different cores if the games aren't working or whatever. But playing with MIDI UI for the last hour or so, it's really grown on me. I think it's great for anyone who wants a nice, simple, elegant solution. Someone who just wants to play their freaking games and not have to tinker around with a thousand and one settings in RetroArch and different cores and configuring hotkeys and saving the settings and all that stuff. Mini UI is just bare bones, super simple. And it's got some really nice features that I actually wish Onion had. And this feature, the ability to load your save state right from the menu, it's just a little bunch of time savers that make it easy and quick. Just no barriers at all. It's probably the simplest, easiest system for any of these retro devices that I've ever used. It works great. It's easy as heck to install. In just a few minutes, you're up and running. No problems at all. So I hope you found this useful or at least entertaining. Uh, please let me know in the comments below. Oh, what do you think of Mini UI? Do you think you'll use it? Are you a diehard Onion fanboy and plan on sticking with that forever? Or do you think maybe you'll go between them? I don't think I'm gonna leave Onion OS because I like the tinkering power that I get there. But I'd be lying if I didn't admit that going with a super simple, no-nonsense OS is somewhat appealing. And I guess that's one of the best part of these little retro handhelds, you know? You have lots of choices. Yeah, you have the option to go with whatever appeals to you. But I'm curious to know what you think, so let me know in the comments below. And while you're down there, if you enjoyed the video, clicking the like button is all you gotta do. Or click the dislike button if you really feel that way, I guess. Also subscribe for more videos like this one. I'm TechLeeb. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. What's in this stuff, anyways? Carbonated water. Oh, that sounds good. Carbol. Uh, I like carbol. Sodium benzoate. Aspartame contains phenylalanine. Uh, that that sounds pretty healthy. So nice all natural phenylalanine. Natural and artificial flavors. <laughs> Best of both worlds, right there. Sodium citrate and malic acid, which I think is the acid that Two Face got burned in. Well, some weird chemicals in there, but they taste great, so they're probably fine. Uh, right?